All right, you were, uh, you were, we were talking about the school. Yes. And that was, uh, well, I, I, they, I think I've already said it enough times that everything that, that the art of teaching and pedagogy really applies where the, the, when the teacher has to become active, that is to do the teaching, that is to say, I act, I teach, I'm going to tell this youngster or this person how to do this and how to do that, it's invariably with a, not a first-rate talent. First-rate talent has, each one has, has, their own evolution, their own development, and they reach up to the sun of learning in a different, with, with a different contortion, each one. That sun has to be there, of course. I mean, the, the, the teacher or the one who has some knowledge or some expertise that, that, the, that the learner wants to absorb has to be there to be devoured, as it were. And then digested and and reemerged in another in the form of uh, this personality. That's a passive. To my mind, that's a passive occupation. That sort of teaching, and it's the one that uh, that I'm I have been good at in those with those few times that I've had really very important talents. But I've been very bad at teaching uh, people because I get with less than that kind of talent because I easily get impatient and and uh, bored. Mm -hmm. But it's a great expertise. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful expertise to be able to teach, but it mustn't be confused with the more important thing, which is learning. Mm -hmm. Learning. Are there any relationships in your mind to the arts? You spoke of a painter before, and you, uh, you had lunch with a film director. Uh, are you yourself interested or practice any other art? art? Well, I'm very deeply interested in painting and, and I'm interested in literature, uh, in all the arts. I read read poetry. I'm interested in many things, everything and, and anything that that goes on in the world, really, that, uh, that uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm a very curious person. Are critics necessary? Uh, serious ones are, but I don't think today's critics are serious because they have deadlines and they're related to c the commerce of a daily. They can't write a daily column newspaper. like Virgil Thompson. And it's not very. I don't think it's very interesting how someone played the Beethoven Fourth or the Fifth Symphony or this or that. I really don't think it's terribly. I, I think what they are are shills. They point the public in the direction of that such and such a way of doing music or, or art that appeals to them or uh, but it's always on that level of go to here here spend your ten dollars a ticket on this rather than on that I don't think that's serious criticism how did the Japanese come to love Western music so in a short time I don't know but I suspect it has to do with liking a lot of Western technological things and and it, it's all related to that industrial revolution and and uh, the uh, age of technology that, that the West. I think that's the emulation point. Are the you Japanese. frightened? And that's because of cameras, but something that goes along with that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. same sort of mentality it created uh, technological things that the Japanese... So love. that means they, they like to hear a big, complete kind of musical art as the West made it. Evolve. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I recommend uh, an interpretation of Oswald Spengler on that subject, which is far more articulate than uh -huh. I can about the 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 um, the age of reason creating the abstract uh, counterpart. Since since music is the most impalpable of all the arts, somehow that it should go along with. Uh, um, the area of uh, materialism and of, of doubting all mystical conceptions. This is the one mystical uh, thing that is embraced. And it's also connected with logic. I mean, Bach is the most logical and yet mystical mm -hmm. at the same time. You and Glenn Gould would have had a lot to talk about. Did we you did, ever meet we'd, him? We'd, oh, yes, many times. We never agreed on anything except that I admired him Tremendously, I don't agree with his way of doing doing things. You mean the, but the he's a great, a great artist. None of which I, I, uh, I mean, I'm happy that he lived and existed because he was a very important figure. But uh, 
I wouldn't recommend that as a way of. It's not my way of making music. You mean be, not what? Not the way of making music and. and Viva the way la varieté. Thank heaven for Glenn, mm -hmm. but I don't agree with him on many things. Uh, one other important pianist died this year, and that was Curzon. Did you? Did you he know was him? a great musician yeah. too. I knew him not not too well. Mm -hmm. Not too well, but he was uh, from the Schnabel, originally from the Schnabel school. Uh, very deep thinking and highly, highly refined artist. When you practice at home, is this a great difference between putting it out to a public of 3,000 people? Do you have to change things? Well, yes, yes, and so so much so that now it's part 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 of the way one one works. One knows that one is giving this out to three thousand people, and there are certain acoustical there are ways of projecting. You simply have to project in larger, uh, larger dynamic dimensions. It takes a lot of experience. It though. does. It does, and you have to know how things carry, and you know how long it's going to take the flute to reach your ears when you're when you have to play together with them. And scales in Mozart piano concerti have to be, you have to have fingers of steel. That's something the public doesn't know. Mm -hmm. To be able to carry those ripply little runs in Mozart concerti that are so delicate against the woodwind section, you have to have fingers that approach Horowitz's power. Did you know that? Yes, yes you I did. know that. But the public doesn't know that. No, the public thinks it's just glamorous. Because the one note and the clarinet or flute as against one note in the upper register of the piano, the, the woodwind instrument drowns out this big, powerful piano, but this one note is nothing next, next to the carrying power of the woodwinds. So we, need, we have to know all that, and we find out through bitter experience when someone comes and tells you that was wonderful, but we didn't hear any of the passage work <laughs> in the last movement. Oh, <laughs> I see. Well, then uh, all these things are... I'll Part ask of a, our a couple of technical things, uh, Eugene. Uh, when learning, say, a Beethoven sonata, uh, do you use various editions? Try, I try to use the manuscript, the autograph, as mm -hmm. much as I can get hold of the manuscript or a, what we call now a clean edition, which is un, untouched by editors. You write in I'd fingerings? I'd like to edit it myself. When you practice, you write in fingerings for no. yourself? No, no, no. Uh, I'm interested. And you mentioned the Beethoven sonatas. That interests me because his own. He did write in a few of his own instruments. Use the fingers. He, fingers, yeah. he used his thumb a lot on black notes, which was against uh, uh, current uh, practice. Uh, current current practice. But there, that's very interesting. You practice away from the piano. Yes, I don't do it voluntarily. Mm -hmm. I, I do it uh, through fear usually. I mean, I'm through insomnia. Sometimes I'll practice in my sleep or I wake up in the middle of the night before a concert and and uh, ask myself, do you know this passage, and make myself pl play it and visualize it for myself and get mixed up and then rush up the next morning to make sure that I, that doesn't happen again in my sleep. So, yes, we think about music all the time, uh, yes. Um, do you practice the piano ever ha with hands separate? Yes, oh yes. And why? Because there's some, uh, I, I try to get that the knot of difficulty or of weakness in, in my hand or in my reflex. That is, here is a place which I somehow am able to play under these conditions and yet it doesn't quite go under pressure. Under, so there's something here that's, that's a weakness. Let me see if I can find it. Then I begin to slow everything up and uh, play. I do practice a lot very slowly and sometimes with separate hands, until I can reach that center, that focal point, where the problem lies. I try to isolate it and, and strengthen it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do it is by magnifying glass on that, that point, I think. That's How do you memorize? Uh, just by the Just practice. by rote, yes, by, just by playing, by, by repetition. Finger uh, memory? No. Uh, I don't even know quite what memory. I mean, it just, it's, it's a, I think it's a combination of, of visual and tactile and uh, What about, oral, is there confusion? Because in your, in your chamber music playing, you don't have to have 
it from memory, and yet you have to play the Tchaikovsky Concerto from memory. Yeah, but sometimes I play all of the chamber music from memory, really. The music is on the stand, but very often I, I find myself getting lost looking at the music, so it's better if I play it by heart. I mean, one usually knows the work so well that one, one can play them by heart. Mm. You said before you dr you had dreams. Uh, uh, do you ever dream music that yes. you have to hear the pieces? In? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have perfect pitch? Yes. What does perfect pitch mean to you? It means a recollection of a tonality. Mm -hmm. Not of just a note, but a tonality itself? Mm -hmm. It means I, I just remember what A or what was A, whatever year I don't know if a was in in the eighteenth century it apparently was a flat today everything was much lower than the the frequencies uh, were are higher today, and so the pitch has gone up somewhat, but whatever was established as a or b or whatever sounds i i I remembered that i i think it's a it's an ability that uh doesn't have very much significance mm -hmm. showed it's a good for showing off, but I don't think it's important for anything else really mm -hmm. and it can be confusing mm -hmm. I mean sometimes one can get one's ability to transpose or, or listen can be um, interrupted or interfered with by that what is good listening because you know we know that our brain just I don't you know. know what's paying attention what's concentration it what's isn't it is attention isn't it yes uh -huh. it is what we were doing as we were in the earlier while we were talking, we were listening to these recordings of mine that you were playing. Both of us were listening, didn't miss a note, did we? We no. were talking, and yet we heard all the time what was happening. Yeah. We couldn't help it, could yeah. we? I mean, that we is, have attention. Wasn't, this, wasn't, this wasn't because, this wasn't because uh, I wanted to hear myself play. If you played your recording, sure. or anyone else's recording of this piece, I would have had to listen. Yes. It, it's... It's the same as, as this this infernal restaurant music that one yeah. has to cope with. I mean, whatever, if it's going on, music is going on, one is obliged to listen to it. Do you think pianists generally are the best musicians of the instrumentalists? Yes, I do, because we have more we have more notes to play, more things to think about, I think. As, as a group, that doesn't mean that there yeah. are, uh, Dietrich Fischer Dieskau is a better musician than quite a number of pianists that I know. Yes. He's a, and he's a voice. Not speak of string players, of course. Yes. Um, Eugene, I think we, I think we have it. And if we don't have I'm it, glad. there's something I'm wrong. Glad. I'm glad. I hope. hope.